You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. You can uh, subscribe to the shows um, via Og Vorbis MP3 or a standard F uh, video. And you can also find us online over at YouTube, uh, blip.tv, dailymotion, and stitcher.com. And... Uh, Feel free to subscribe in the whichever one you wish to, uh, whichever uh, site you decide you want to do. Uh, you can shoot me an email, linux at quicksurf.com. And I'm actually, this show is going to be relatively short. I've been fighting off a, uh, a really severe cold uh, the last few days. And quite frankly, <clears throat> I, um, I'm not sure how much talking I'm going to be able to get out. So, but the show must go on. Uh, starting off over at Forbes, Dell slashes Alienware X51 PC by $100 and adds Ubuntu Linux as an option. This is awesome. So Alienware's console-sized X51 PC, it's classified as a mini gaming desktop by Dell, is now shipping at an introductory price of $599 if you configure it with Ubuntu Linux and an Intel Core i3 CPU. I don't know how much gaming power you're going to have with a Core i3 CPU, but the fact that you can get it with Linux is pretty neat. Uh, definitely check it out. From ZDNet, uh, transform your IT legacy. Open, uh, well, that's an ad, never mind. Open source Linux drivers for Tegra chips unlock 3D capability. That's right. Third party open source drivers that unlock the 3D capability of NVIDIA's Tegra processors has been released. The drivers developed by a team from Avionic Design, led by Theory Redding, build upon an earlier driver project that gave developers access to the Tegra's Grid 2 engine. Uh, the, this project has both the blessing of and the backing from NVIDIA, so pretty interesting nonetheless. Um, actually, you know what? I almost forgot about this. Before we go much further, I have actually received an email um, from Michael. Um, the subject is, please plug German Maker Fair the 20th and 21st of April. Dear podcasters, there is a Make Munich, a German Maker Fair coming up soon, the 20th and 21st of April in Munich. I would greatly appreciate it if you could plug them in your shows in case you release before the event and think this is interesting for your European listeners. So for those of you in Europe, if you want to go to this, it is uh, located at http colon forward slash forward slash make tac or the hyphen munich dot de forward slash en. From there, Make Munich is an exhibition which will take place on the 20th and 21st of April of 2013, where we'll share trends and innovations in 3D printing, DIY hacking, tinkering, and crafting. This is the first event of its kind in southern Germany, and we look forward to connecting people in the DIY community. Thanks a lot. Regards, Michael. So definitely go check, check that out. Um, if that's uh, something that uh, you're looking, if you're looking for something to do, the 20th and the 21st of April. From Engadget, AMD offers open source Linux driver for hardware video decoding. That's right. AMD's unified decoder has been the object of envy in the open source community for some time. The silicon, which ships on the company's Radeon graphics cards, offers hardware accelerated video decoding, but thanks to legal and DRM issues, couldn't be used on Linux machines. AMD, however, has somehow scythed through the red tape to offer a driver that'll let those same Linux users access to the golden chalice of video decoding. So the new patch allows for hardware accelerated playback of H.264, VC1, and MPEG file formats on which Radeon HD 4000 through 7000 series cards 
happen to be jammed into your home theater PC. So if you're an XBMC user or something of that nature, you can probably take advantage of this. From ZDNet, Ubuntu 13.04 goes beta. Uh, you know, not a whole lot new to report there. Um, you know, it's kind of, you know, Ubuntu's new version that they're getting ready to release. From networkworld.com in the open source fact and fiction blog, the uh, author here, Alan Schimmel, has a post entitled, I ditched Windows 8 and went Ubuntu by mistake. So basically, this is his recounting of his experience of accidentally installing uh, and being stuck on uh, Ubuntu Linux while he was trying to fix his touchpad that had Windows 8 on it and somehow messed up his boot partition and now can only boot into Ubuntu. So uh, pretty interesting read. Um, check it out. From linuxgizmos.com, inside Mantis, a two-ton hexapod robot with a Linux brain. After four years of development, micromanage magic systems has finally completed the Mantis hexapod walking machine claimed to be the world's largest all-terrain operational hexapod robot. The device stands nearly three meters tall, weighs just under two tons, and is controlled by a PC slash 104 module stack running embedded Linux. This is pretty neat. Um, definitely check this out. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Uh, you can find those online over at uh, quicksurf.com. And um, you can find uh, linked up a variety of ways to uh, follow me on the interwebs as well as a variety of ways to find me online and find the shows online and get the shows online. Um, and with that, I think I'm going to stop talking now. This is probably the longest I've been able to talk the entire weekend. And uh, even though I feel quite a bit better this afternoon, um, I probably, unfortunately, won't be at work tomorrow simply because the morning times are when I feel the worst. And I'm starting to lose my voice already. So uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. And I'll see you then. Bye.